so the good news is we just got our car back from the shop and we got stickers for 324. That means that we can do some tuning once the weather improves. Play a loud in the streets, go out and get yourself a freak. Play a loud in the streets, go lay 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 a loud in the streets, out in the streets, out in the streets, out in the streets. Okay, so welcome to our intermediate tutorial here of K-Tuner. I'm going to start off with loading a new tune. Click Next and we're going to load up our 91 octane tune. Right now I have 93 octane in the car. I have a engine intake. I have the RV6 high flow cat J pipe intermediate pipe and I have a Borla muffler system on the back end of there. I also installed a P2R lower uh, ported intake manifold as well, ported runners. So now that we have our tune loaded up here, we can start going through the parameters. My first parameters here are high rev limits. So this is what the engine is going to rev up to before it changes gears. This was changed from factory settings. I don't think that this was so that so we're going to drop this down. Notice that the difference between these two are 2000 RPM. Also, if you want to change the lower rev limits, you should also be changing the basic two step. Notice how the lower restart and the limit are the same on both the rev limit and the basic two step. Since I have an automatic, I do not have these. These are going to give you the that fun pop that everybody enjoys. We have something different and I'll show you and I'll get to that in a minute. The VTEC settings we're also going to change here. Notice that the difference between the engage and disengage is also 2000 RPM. We want to make sure that no matter what we're doing here that we keep 2000 RPM difference between the two. The minimum temp, engine speed, and disengage speed are all important. These are not going to change. The other thing we're going to change here is we're going to change these to 500 millibars. Because what happens is this all works on a logic system. So everything has to be in agreement before VTEC will come on. We don't want VTEC to come on below 3000. We do want it to come on nice and easy above 500 millibars. Your throttle position, typically anything above, I would say 40%, 30-40% would give you around 800 to 500 millibars. Your millibars works on pressure in your intake because that turns into a vacuum. So the more closed your throttle plate is, the less vacuum you will have. So if you're down near 10, 20% throttle position, you will most likely be seeing probably around two to 300 millibars. If you are wide open throttle, and you are at a higher RPM, you are most likely going to see much higher millibars. So that's why we want this come down a lot so that this can come on nice and easy anytime that we're between 4,000 and 5,000. And since we are running these high flow cats, what we want to do is we want to disable these. Now, the good thing is, yes, it's true, I did pass my emissions test, but 
the check engine light came on only once so far when I had Eco on and I was just putting around town for a little bit. So I'm not really sure that that's something I really want to deal with, even though there's nothing wrong with the system. I don't want to be bothered with the check engine light. There's a check engine light on. I want to panic that there's something actually wrong, not uh, O2 sensors are, you know, not, not keeping up. They're old. They do need to be replaced. I think I'm at 120, 110,000 miles, right? So they should be, need to be replaced. It's not a lot of money to replace them. I just was in there and changed all those. So I don't want to mess with that right now. So we're just going to turn them off. We don't care about that. Fuel injector dead times. This is going to change depending on what fuel injectors you have. I'm running stock fuel injectors. They're not necessarily needed unless you're really porting your heads, which is not what I'm doing. So we're keeping it stock with the stock. We're going to keep all this stock here. This is our post idle start and our idle normal so this is the the target right so that's the target rpm that the car wants to be in while it starts up and then you see the difference between these this is actually lower so that's why when you start up your car it idles a little bit higher try, starts to get things going a little bit and then eventually comes down so we can adjust these settings we're not going to though so the wide open throttle map is only good if we are going to use this tune for drag racing we'll load this tune up for the drag racing and then it will not go off of our throttle position it'll go into wide open throttle mode based only on the map so that's that map that millibar pressure that we were talking about earlier so we're not going to mess with that we're going to turn that off we do we do want it to be wide open throttle based on the throttle position these are the air fuel ratios we're going to get into this next time with the target air fuels this is mostly for closed loop so closed loop is what we would consider running off of the computer running off of the the o2 sensors it has its own own calculated idea of what it's going to what it's looking for as the target and the wide open throttle is what we would consider open loop so that kind of gives you a little bit of the difference between the two. Our fuel cut settings, we're going to change this from 100 to 0 because when we are lifting our foot off of the gas pedal sometimes what the car does is it keeps it in an rpm for a certain amount of time before it cuts the fuel and we're going to change that to zero so that it gets a nice cut and then we're also going to change the timing this is the timing between lifting your foot off the pedal and the fuel cut. So this is the fuel cut delay. And that is in milliseconds. So we're just going to, we're going to drop this down. Math scaling is also something that we're going to do next time what we are going to need to do is reduce all of these to kind of get because we have more airflow going into it it's trying to compensate by 
adding fuel, removing fuel. It doesn't really know what to do, so we're going to adjust these and try and trim it out. But that requires um, driving. And we're going to drive, we're going to do that on a safe road at a safe time. The DBW maps is the mostly based on the throttle position and so what you need to notice here is this is in kilometers per hour. Kilometers per hour is probably I would consider half miles per hour. So 40 kilometers per hour is around 20 miles an hour if that makes any sense. And this is the throttle position. So an economy uh, with you have, when you have the eco on, you're pushing your foot down at 110 kilometers an hour, which is about 60 miles an hour, right? You're putting your foot down 12, 10, 12%. It's actually telling the computer to go only 9% so that you save on, on gas. Sport mode, you'll notice that this is closer to a one-to-one -one ratio. Now, the one thing that K-Tuner said was that 83 is virtually 100. We're going to change it all to 83. And we want to do that all the way across the board. When we put our foot down 81%, we want it to read 83%. So we do want it higher. You see here, eco is lower. When you, when you put your foot down 6%, it reads 3%. So you can also change all the gears. We're not going to do that. It's just kind of go through. You can look at the differences. You see, when, when we're in sixth gear, we don't, we're not expecting the car to go wide open throttle all the time. So when we put our foot down 10% here, it's only going to read 5. I want you to notice here, when we go into the final map, this is going to be RPMs versus throttle position. And here we have our 83.3 again. So you know what? Let's go back and fix that. Let's do 83.3. And we want to do this for all of them. Now, the fun part here, K-Tuner has for the automatic, they have come out with improved shifting level 1, improved shifting level 2. So this will give us a faster shift, but it will land in the gear it shifts up to at a higher RPM. It will also stay in gear longer too. When you're tuning, the one thing that you want to keep in mind is that you want to correct your air settings so that the car is reading the correct air then you want to go in and you want to correct your fuel make sure that you are getting the correct air fuel ratio which also coincides with the with the math correct so we want to make sure that all that is is going to be good is correct and gives us a nice air fuel ratio throughout the entire power band and then after that, we can start advancing our ignition timing. So, as you can see, when it's in a low load, there is no correction. But when we are in a high load, that is when they are giving it some correction. So, when they're advancing the time, that means that the spark is going to start sooner in the in the process right as the piston comes up the fuel gets compressed the air and fuel gets compressed at what time does the ignition come on what 
can happen is if the ignition comes on too far in advance, then what we'll see is we'll see detonation. If the so if if the spark comes on too early before the piston reaches top dead center, then that pressure pushes the piston in the opposite direction. And that's when we get knocking, that's when we get detonation, and that's when we get major engine problems. So we want to make sure that everything is running smoothly before we start messing with the ignition. We advance it a little bit, and then what we're looking for is we're looking for that knock as we're advancing it in time, and then back it back off. I hope that gives a little bit of a background. So now what we're going to do is we are going to, we're going to load up our tune. We're going to put this in number two this time. If that we run into any small problems, we can always flash back to factory we can now we're going to go back to our car and flash it and see what happens <laughs> 